every academic subject has a way of communicating the basic idea of what you are thinking and want to create. It might be poetry or it might be mathematic formulas. In engineering, we call them schematics, and for individual parts, we use data sheets. The purpose of a schematic is to convey to anyone who looks at it exactly what the circuit is doing. This is very easy to do with small one-page schematics like this circuit, which turns an LED on. However, large projects can have multi-page schematics and the design quickly becomes less obvious without looking at it closely for a few hours or even days. Nevertheless, we must draw out schematics both as a reference to everyone who will be involved with your design and for documentation in case we want to reuse a part of your circuit in the future. The other half of documentation for electrical engineering is in data sheets. Data sheets hold all the information about a single part so that if you want to use it, you can read the data sheet and learn what the part does and how to use it. Any part built by a manufacturer and sold commercially should have a data sheet, usually available on their website. If a part does not have a data sheet, Save yourself the headache and do not use that part. Let's take a learn by doing approach and walk through creating our own schematic for a circuit so that you are more familiar with the process. When drawing a schematic, typically you will always start with a power supply represented by this symbol. Then you will continue to draw your circuit out using straight lines with 90 degree turns to represent wires. A common problem with schematics is that wires will cross, but that doesn't mean those two wires are connected. If two wires on your schematic cross and they are also connected, we use a large dot to symbolize this connection. With that, the circuit is complete. It is also good form to add your reference to ground, which is usually the same as the negative side of your power supply. The final step is adding reference designators and values to all of the parts in your schematic. Now let's swap sides and see when we need to look at data sheets and what information they hold. Pretend you are looking at a schematic that someone else has drawn. If you are unfamiliar with a part like this one here, labeled 74LS373, built by Texas Instruments, you can easily go to Texas Instruments website and type in the part number, and in seconds find their data sheet for the 74LS373 device. The first page of almost every datasheet contains the same information, a summary of what the part was designed to be used for, the pinouts for different size IC packages, and a summary of the part's functionality. After this first page, a lot of information will follow, and there is no real standard for how it will look. For the 74LS373, we are mostly concerned with absolute maximum values the gate level logic diagram, truth tables, and timing diagrams. Don't worry if you're not familiar with all of these names. After some time studying electronics, they will all be more familiar to you. The final pages of most data sheets will include the voltage, current, power, frequency, and temperature charts for how the device will operate at different values as well as the mechanical package sizes in metric and American units. Through these 10 lessons of modern electronics, we only scratched the surface of the electronic circuit symbols that are used in schematics. There are actually many thousands, if not more, of different circuit symbols that are variations of the basic symbols that we saw in the resistors, capacitors, inductors, and other lessons. You can see some of these across the screen now. Let's take a moment to go through and look at some of the more important circuit symbols and what they mean. We have already seen these three circuit symbols for a resistor, capacitor, and inductor. A common variation on these symbols is the variable version, indicated by putting an arrow through the symbol. This means the value of the component you're using is actually variable, like the trim pot we used in a few experiments. The diode circuit symbol, which looks like this, has two popular variations that are commonly used. 
One is the light emitting diode, LED, indicated by this circle and two arrows, and the other called the Zener diode, indicated by the diode's straight line with two angled lines on the top and bottom. The power supply symbol usually looks like one of the two symbols on the left side of the screen, with a plus sign denoting the positive side. It's good form to write the voltage coming from that point. The ground symbols commonly look like either of the two symbols on the right side of the screen. Many times, a power supply and ground connect to so many different places in your circuit that the schematic would look crazy if you actually connected them all together. Using these two symbols, you can neatly connect power and ground to several places without cluttering up your schematic, and therefore make it easier to read. In the modern world, schematics are not actually drawn by hand, but rather using computers. The real advantage to using a computer to draw your schematic design is that if you want to make a PCB, the computer tools can easily convert your schematic input to a PC board layout, where you can arrange all the parts and wires on a PCB. Data sheets fly around like crazy in modern times. It used to be that data sheets filled up books that would sit on people's shelves. But now, any part that has a data sheet can usually be found on the internet, either by looking on the manufacturer's website or through a data sheet archiving website. While most people dread looking through the boring text of data sheets, being able to read a data sheet well is a treasured skill that electrical engineers need to have. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com pyroedu. Thanks for following along with this introduction to Modern Electronics course. I hope you learned from and enjoyed each lesson. Please visit pyroelectro.com edu for more free courses and lessons on electronics and robotics.